Yo, what is going on guys? Winter Kills here and welcome back to a brand new locals feature match. Today we have something different. Uh, very, very different. I know there's been a ton of tier and the like on the channel the past couple weeks, whether it be in feature matches or in the Saturday Night Local series, so I figured I'd give you guys a little variety. And uh, maybe this is not the variety you guys were looking for, but this is the variety we've got today. It is Labyrinth versus runic mystic mine uh, so this is going to be a pretty in quotes interesting match and that's pretty much all i have to say i've played against labyrinth a handful of times at locals um not the greatest deck but it definitely does have some really good cards going for it and i also don't usually speed up videos this fast, but I think for reasons you guys could probably already understand, I had to speed this video up to 200%. I normally don't go above 150 for videos like these, but for a, for a matchup like this, I, I had to go to 200. So we are going to see Labyrinth kind of set up a little bit here with the field spell and three set. And we're going to see Runic start things off with a copy of Flashing Fire, which is going to go ahead and summon Huggins from the extra deck. And we'll see him use Huggins' effect, discarding, I believe, Runic Slumber to attempt to go ahead and search a Runic Field spell. We're going to see Imperm activated in response. And with the Field spell up, at resolution, um, he can destroy one card on the field. And then he can special summon a Fiend Moss from the hand or graveyard. Uh, so we're going to see a Call by the Grave in response, hitting the lovely Labyrinth. Of the silver castle out of the grave and if you activate a non labyrinth trap yeah that's the other effect is um if you activate a labyrinth trap i believe yeah normal trap you destroy a card at resolution but since imperm is not a labyrinth trap you would have gotten the re reborn and the reborn will be stopped by call by we're gonna see him slap down a mystic mine after setting two we know runic is literally just mine support for some reason because the deck well the card just needed better things to go with right we're also now going to see welcome labyrinth to go ahead and bring out the ariana and the field spell is going to come in very clutch here to help clear another field spell which is mystic mine and ariana is going to go ahead and add a labyrinth card from the deck to the hand on normal or special so we'll see him grab another copy of welcome labyrinth and Welcome Labyrinth says, special summon a Labyrinth monster from your deck, also until the end of this next turn. After this uh, card resolves, you cannot special summon monsters from the extra deck, or from the deck or extra deck, except fiend monsters. And if a monster leaves the field by a normal trap effect, while this card is your graveyard, except the turn it was sent there, you can set this card. So just kind of like a reoccurring trap card. Really nice for the strategy. We're going to see Labyrinth lead with a copy of Extrav, Banishing Six, to go ahead and draw two. We're going to see Ariana attack into the Huggins. Huggins will just return itself to the extra deck, as it does. And... This is the way to, you know, like, beat the Runic Mine deck. You just out-mine as fast as humanly possible, leave them on very little cards, and you just tend to win very fast. So long as they don't have, like, you know, Demise of the Land or Metaverse, right? Um, or, I guess, Foolish Burial Goods, which lets them search mine now with the new Crystal uh, Beast Trap card, which is also insane. Uh, so more Mystic Mine access, right? But, like, that's the thing about this deck. It loses very fast when it does lose, but when it wins, it takes forever, which is super unfortunate. Uh, so we're going to see him normal summon Inspector Border. And now we're going to go ahead and see Welcome Labyrinth activate. And this, paired with the Field Spell, will go ahead and be able to clear Inspector Border, which is normally a pretty big floodgate to deal with. And, you know, you'd think, like, for this matchup period... Uh, like the labyrinth deck would be pretty favored to win because all of the removal that it has in the form of like non-monster effect removal especially with like ghastly glitch and welcome labyrinth and all that stuff like this would be a pretty easy matchup here um but uh we'll just see if that's actually the case because in theory again it should be easy but we'll see if that ends up being the case so we'll see welcome labyrinth uh go ahead and summon out a lovely labyrinth and the inspector border, I believe, was protected by a copy of Slumber. Um, so border will get to live here, and we'll just see him pass turn. But lovely Labyrinth, I believe, does have decent stats at 2,900. And Ariana's got 16. 
So can swing in for a decent amount of damage here. Obviously, Inspector Border is kind of a house at 2,000. So only drop him down to 55. Main phase 2, we're going to see him activate Stovey. I recognize this card. Discarding another card I also recognize, the Supreme King Backjack. And Stovey will go ahead and basically quick effect, send this card from your hand or field to the graveyard, and discard one card, set a Labyrinth Spell Trap directly from your hand or deck. Um, so we'll get to do the Backjack. And uh, before you know it, that game is going to end rather quickly. Runic Mine taking the L there. Um, despite, you know, having a decent foothold at the beginning, not going to be enough to fight off all of the removal that the Labyrinth deck had readily available to it. Just lucky that most of it wasn't banished by Runic cards. So in game two, again, a quick shout out, obviously, to Imperium Duelist. Um, check them out in the link below. Don't forget to use my discount code Wonderkill stuff at checkout. And yeah, we're going to see Runic lead here. Opening hand, very, very poor. Leading with D Fisher, and he, he showed his hand there briefly to the camera. Set rotation, Cosmic Cyclone, as well as some other cards. We'll see Labyrinth set five. And uh, we're going to see a little bit of a, a very unfortunate moment. Boom! Harpy's Feather Duster into set five. Yeah, wow. And we're going to see him chain a bunch of traps of this. Chaining Welcome Labyrinth, chaining D Barrier, calling Fusion, I imagine. Low key D Barrier is not a bad card against Runic in my testing. Uh, like, it actually saved me in a match against Runic Sprite, where I top deck Dustered out of mine, and it was my last out in the deck. And, uh, you know, he chained a Flashing Fighter, I think, or Freezing Curses to Fusion Summon. D Barrier came in clutch, and uh, he was not able to protect the mine simply because he could not summon fusion monsters. So a little thing to sort of uh, keep in mind if you guys play against Runic and you got D-Barrier on your side, even if you're going first or second, definitely put it in there because stopping a Huggins from coming out or whatever is definitely worth it. And sometimes that's why I even like to side cards like Judgment uh, going second against Backer decks because you just kind of need more outs to certain powerful spells and traps later on in the game. Even if it is slow, it's going to be a slow game to begin with anyways. We're going to see Set Row now. Going ahead and giving out a Mystic Mine and one other field spell to the opponent. And uh, yeah, let the games begin the draw pass, draw pass, draw pass games. So just an Ariana on field for our Labyrinth player. Really not much they can do, especially after getting hit with a Harpy's Feather Duster for five. Yeah, losing five cards right off the rip. Definitely going to slow things down. Uh, Could have also potentially gotten rid of a lot of the decks good in engine outs. Do see a Compulse in the Grave. So we're going to see him um, pass turn. Runic passing. Labyrinth passing back to Runic. And then Labyrinth pa or Runic passing back to Labyrinth. Um, yeah. I mean, what, what, what else would you expect at this point? End phase. He's going to set a Rivalry. And we're going to see he get hit with Cosmic. Interesting to see Rivalry still in the main deck. I don't know if he didn't have enough stuff to side out and just decided to leave Rivalry in. Um, but uh, I don't think Rivalry's going to be doing too much here. We're going to see Runic lead with the Runic tip to go ahead and search out a copy of Runic Destruction. His opponent will banish a couple cards off the top after resolving the tip. And Destruction is going to go ahead and hit the Runic field spell on the opponent's side that was given to him by the set row. And then we're going to see him drop a runic fountain over top of his own mystic mind so feeling as though he can play without the mystic mind at this point and try to play a little bit more aggressively we're going to see him activate smiting storm and opt to go ahead and fusion well not fusion summon but special summon a runic monster from the extra deck and we're going to go ahead and see him summon out a copy of moonin or munin and then he'll also get the effect of fountain to put back three, draw three, TC Boo among those cards. It's the War of the Floodgates. We're going to see him activate Golden Droplet now, which is going to allow his opponent to draw a card and then banish the top four. So we're seeing him get rid of an evenly, two evenlies, a rivalry, and a welcome labyrinth. Every copy of Welcome Labyrinth lost is going to hurt quite a bit. And then end phase, we'll see him gain back a thousand life points. And this is every end phase this card gains a thousand. Not only did they want this deck not have to worry about having a battle phase, um, because now it can just win in time for free because of you know the thousand life point gain. Uh, it doesn't need the battle phase because it can just deck the opponent out. It's just 
such an infuriating deck to play against at the end of the day, especially game one. Like, not having loads of spell and trap removal. Very, very infuriating. We're going to see him activate the field spell. Chain a copy. I, I think that might have been uh, Flashing Fire or, or, or Destruction, which is the MST in response. And we're just going to see our Labyrinth player scoop. Also, guys, don't forget to check out uh, my affiliate link to TCG Player. Anytime you guys shop and check out using that link, a small bit of the revenue from your purchase will go right back into the channel and helps out a ton. Game three, we're going to see Labyrinth go first here, leading with Extrav, going for a Banish 6. Normal summoning Ariana, activating its effect. Go ahead and search a Labyrinth card from the deck to the hand, except itself. Another part of the effect is it says, if another monster or monsters leaves the field by your normal trap effect, you can draw one card. Then you can apply this effect from your hand, either from your hand, either special summon one fiend monster or set one spell trap. So we're going to see him go ahead and get the field spell. And then using the effect of the Chan Draglier, discarding itself and the lovely, to go ahead and get access to a copy of Welcome Labyrinth, activating the field spell and setting two and passing turn. Seems like a pretty solid setup right now for the Labyrinth deck. Has a couple ways to out Mystic Mine. The graveyard is kind of set up with Lovely Labyrinth as well. And for our Runic player, I do see Set Rotation in Metaverse. Love to see that. Love that for him. We're going to see him activate Set Row. And uh, yeah, our, uh, our Labyrinth player wasn't sure if you could uh, activate Set Row over somebody's field spell, but you can. It's one of the nice one of the nice things about it is that it uh, can be an out to Mystic Mine. And it also means that if this set rotation resolves, he'll lose the lovely, uh, oh my goodness, he'll lose the Labyrinth Labyrinth, which will cut him off uh, from the additional effects that he would have gotten by activating Welcome Labyrinth, which are really good effects, effects that he needs to be able to out things like Mystic Mine. And yeah, it's just really unfortunate to see set row not only being able to bring out the mine, but also at the same time cut off his access to out the mine. Also, Harpy's Feather Duster in the hand for our runic players as well. Just absolutely strapped with some insane one ofs here. Set rotation, Harpy's Feather Duster, and D Fissure and Metaverse. So, in re response to the Harpy's Feather Duster, we're going to see him activate Welcome Labyrinth, summon a Labyrinth monster from the deck. Also, into the end of this. Uh, End of the next turn after this card resolves, you cannot special summon monsters from the deck or extra deck except for fiends. We're going to see him bring out lovely Labyrinth. All the spells and traps will get wiped. And then we're going to see our Runic player activate Runic Dispelling. No, Runic Allure. Okay. Activate Defy, set two, and pass. Runic Allure says each time a quick play spell card activates, banish the top card of your opponent's deck. So, fun. <laughs> And it's also nice to see that our Labyrinth player didn't play super hard into the Duster this time around. He only set two the first time. Could have probably set more and uh, kind of not getting super hard punished this time around like we saw in game two. Because still has two cards to set now on the follow-up and uh, definitely kind of helping him keep tempo here. Because, you know, you can't afford to get blown out for five again. Runic. Not really looking like they're doing anything this turn here. Just kind of keeping the mind control up with the die fi Which is honestly not really going to... It's definitely not going to affect the Labyrinth deck or uh, the uh, Runic deck here at all. Obviously, because it only banishes monsters, not all cards. May affect the Labyrinth deck a little bit later on as the game continues to grind on. But immediately, not so much. We'll turn off things though like... Uh, Stovey and Chandraglier, since I believe those cards specifically need to hit to the gra get to the graveyard. And now we're going to see him activate Welcome Labyrinth and Chain Fair Welcome Labyrinth. When a monster declares an attack while you control a fiend monster, target one card in the field, negate the attack, and if you destroy that targeted card, then you can set a non-Labyrinth Normal Trap from your hand or deck. Set one non-Labyrinth Normal Trap, so they can get access to anything. Um, so I assume he's going to the battle phase here. And he's going to go ahead and attempt to pop the mine. And in response, we are going to see Metaverse activate. Placing a new copy of Mystic Mine onto the field, making it so that Fair Welcome Labyrinth will miss its target. That would have been the out, and honestly, I think would have swung the game very heavily in the favor of Labyrinth here. But now having to deal with a second copy of Mystic Mine... 
and uh, needs to find the field spell Labyrinth, Labyrinth, and Welcome Labyrinth very fast, or things are going to start spiraling out of control. Slowly but surely, we're going to see a Runic draw, set one and pass, Imperm in hand, and draw a pass for Labyrinth, and now passing it back over to Runic. Going ahead and activating a copy of Runic Slumber to Special Summon Moonin. And we're going to start playing the Life Point gain. Also, Allure will make his opponent banish one off the top. Gets rid of an extra. If that one's got to hurt. That would have been a great top deck. And we'll see Runic pass turn. I see he has the Evil Twin, Kiss a Kill, and Lila, main deck monster in hand right now. Also curious to see is why Ultimate Slayer is in here. I mean, I guess you can dump Entis, which gets rid of the uh, Runic Fusion Monsters, and then Entis can not clear Mystic Mind because it's a monster. So yeah, I don't really know why Ultimate Slayer would be in the deck here. And also the Life Point gain is about to go crazy. Had to, uh, I think, one of the highest Life Point counts ever on the channel. I don't know. Could be wrong. Just a lot of back and forth right now. End phase, Moon and Gain 1,000, putting his, this... Uh, Runic player up to 12,000 life points. Passing over to Labyrinth now. Setting two more cards. And passing turn. Gaining another 1,000 in the end phase. Runic starting with a copy of Tip. Go ahead and search a Runic card. And then banish the top cards of the opponent's deck. And we might have a response here to the Runic Tip. And of course, once Tip resolves, the Allura will banish another card off the top. But we are going to see in response to Runic Tip, it looks like, uh, Terrors of the Overroot. Target one card your opponent controls and one card in their graveyard. Send that card on the field of the graveyard. And if you do, set the other card from the graveyard to your opponent's field. So we're going to see him get rid of the Diefy. And his opponent will be able to reset another card. I'm not sure which one he grabbed off of that. And then we're going to see Tip and Allure Banish, copy of Welcome, and a copy of Imperm. I had to look that card up for a second. I thought it was Farewell uh, Labyrinth, but, or Farewell Welcome Labyrinth, but it is um, Terrors of the Overroot. Never seen that card. I know it's new, at least I think anyways. We're going to see, oh, he reset the Duster. Hmm, wonderful. <laughs> so Duster is going to go ahead and just resolve here, clearing more cards off of our Labyrinth player's field. Another D, uh, D, uh, D, D Barrier. Almost a D-Prison, D-Fissure, but then I finally got to D-Barrier. Runic's going to set a couple more cards and pass turn. Clock is ticking here for our Labyrinth player to be able to out this mine. And going to turn the area on into defense. End phase, Munin will gain 1,000, putting him up to 16,000 life points. Yep, draw a pass for Runic. Labyrinth, draw a pass. Runic, draw. Activate another copy of Tip. Another two cards will go off the top of the deck here for our Labyrinth player. One from the tip, one from the Allure. He'll add a copy of Golden Droplet, banishing another Terrors of the Overroot and a copy of Dogmatica Punishment. And that honestly might have been one of the last outs. We're going to see him activate Golden Droplet, banish four, draw one. We'll draw one, banish four. And then we're going to see him activate copy of the Runic Slumber. And... All the while, more cards getting banished because of Allure, and very understandably so. We'll see a little uh, flustered Labyrinth player here, but I get it. You know, nobody likes losing to mine and deck out. Not a very fun or an interactive game state to be, and mine definitely should have been banned, but here we are. But either way, huge shout out, Ghost Star Divine level channel members, who are Pony Star, Cadillacs, 84, Justin Lamb, and HTH Hybrid. Thank you guys so much as always for your extremely kind and generous support of this channel.